In philosophy and logic, the concept of a possible world is used to express modal claims. The concept of possible worlds is common in contemporary philosophical discourse but has been disputed. Possibility, necessity, and contingency. Those theorists who use the concept of possible worlds consider the actual world to be one of the many possible worlds. For each distinct way the world could have been, there is said to be a distinct possible world. The actual world is the one we in fact live in. Among such theorists there is disagreement about the nature of possible worlds. The precise ontological status is disputed, and especially the difference, if any, in ontological status between the actual world and all the other possible worlds. One position on these matters is set forth in David Lewis's modal realism. There is a close relation between propositions and possible worlds. We note that every proposition is either true or false at any given possible world, then the modal status of a proposition is understood in terms of the world in which it is true and worlds in which it is false. The following are among the assertions we may now usefully make. True propositions are those that are true in the actual world. False propositions are those that are false in the actual world. Possible propositions are those that are true in at least one possible world. This includes propositions which are necessarily true, in the sense below. Impossible propositions are those that are true in no possible world. Necessarily true propositions are those that are true in all possible worlds. Contingent propositions are those that are true in some possible worlds and false in others. The idea of possible worlds is most commonly attributed to Gottfried Leibniz, who spoke of possible worlds as ideas in the mind of God and used the notion to argue that our actually created world must be the best of all possible worlds. However, scholars have also found implicit traces of the idea in the works of René Descartes, a major influence on Leibniz, Al-Ghazali, Averroes, Faik al-Din al-Razi and John Duns Scotus. The modern philosophical use of the notion was pioneered by David Lewis and Saul Kripke, formal semantics of modal logics. A semantics for modal logic was first introduced in the late 1950s work of Saul Kripke and his colleagues. A statement in modal logic that is possible is said to be true in at least one possible world. A statement that is necessary is said to be true in all possible worlds. From modal logic to philosophical tool. From this groundwork, the theory of possible worlds became a central part of many philosophical developments from the 1960s onwards, including, most famously, the analysis of counterfactual conditionals in terms of nearby possible worlds developed by David Lewis and Robert Stalnaker. On this analysis, when we discuss what would happen if some set of conditions were the case, the truth of our claims is determined by what is true at the nearest possible world where the conditions obtain. Consider this conditional sentence. If George W. Bush hadn't become president of the U.S. in 2001, Al Gore would have, the sentence would be taken to express a claim that could be reformulated as follows. In all nearest worlds to our actual world where George W. Bush didn't become president of the U.S. In 2001, Al Gore became president of the U.S. Then instead, and on this interpretation of the sentence, if there is or are some nearest worlds to the actual world where George W. Bush didn't become president, but Al Gore didn't either, then the claim expressed by this counterfactual would be false. Today, possible worlds play a central role in many debates in philosophy, including especially debates over the zombie argument, and physicalism and supervenience in the philosophy of mind. Many debates in the philosophy of religion have been reawakened by the use of possible worlds. Intense debate has also emerged over the ontological status of possible worlds, provoked especially by David Lewis's defense of modal realism. The doctrine that talk about possible worlds is best explained in terms of innumerable, really existing worlds beyond the one we live in. The fundamental question here is, 
given that modal logic works, and that's impossible world semantics for modal logic is correct, what has to be true of the world? And just what are these possible worlds that we range over in our interpretation of modal statements? Lewis argued that would we range over a real, concrete world that exist just as unequivocally as our actual world exists, but that are distinguished from the actual world simply by standing in no spatial, temporal, or causal relations with the actual world. Others, such as Robert Adams and William Lycan, reject Lewis's picture as metaphysically extravagant, and suggest in its place an interpretation of possible worlds as consistent maximally complete sets of descriptions of all propositions about the world, so that a possible world is conceived of as a complete description of the way the world could be, rather than a world that is that way. Saul Kripke, in Naming and Necessity, took explicit issue with Lewis's use of possible world semantics. Ing defended a stipulative account of possible worlds as purely formal entities rather than either really existent worlds or as some set of propositions or descriptions. Possible world theory in literary studies Possible world theory in literary studies uses concepts from possible world logic and applies them to worlds that are created by fictional texts. Fictional universe in particular, possible world theory provides a useful vocabulary and conceptual framework with which to describe such worlds. However, a literary world is a specific type of possible world, quite distinct from the possible worlds in logic. This is because a literary text houses its own system of modality, consisting of actual worlds and possible worlds. In fiction, the principle of simultaneity, it extends to cover the dimensional aspect when it is contemplated that two or more physical objects, realities, perceptions and objects non-physical, can coexist in the same space-time. Thus, a literary universe is granted autonomy in much the same way as the actual universe. Literary critics, such as Marie Law Ryan, Lou Bummer Dolezal, and Thomas Pavel, have used possible worlds theory to address notions of literary truth. The nature of fictionality, and the relationship between fictional worlds and reality. Taxonomies of fictional possibilities have also been proposed where the likelihood of a fictional world is assessed. Rain Roud has extended this approach onto cultural worlds comparing possible worlds to the particular constructions of reality of different cultures. Possible world theory is also used within narratology to divide a specific text into its constituent worlds, possible and actual. In this approach, the modal structure of the fictional text is analyzed in relation to its narrative and thematic concerns.